Good morning, commissioners, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to the January 6, 2022 commissioners uh, working up meeting. If you would please stand and join me by saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I call this meeting to order at 9 a.m. And at this time, I open up the floor to public comments. Do we have anyone on the line? We have a Philip Beck on the line. Are there any public comments? Okay. Well, hearing that and seeing that, we'll move on then to agenda item number three. And I'll call on Tammy Berkey to cover contracts and grants. Yes. Thank you, Stacy. Agenda item number three, numeral 1A through C is existing contracts, contract extensions, or addenda with no additional cost or increase to the county for children and youth services, planning, and the recorder of deeds. Commissioners, do you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding any of this agreement? Hearing now, we will move on to agenda item number three, numeral two, which consists of new contracts, vendors, services grants, and contracts with increases or decreases to the county. I will begin by calling on Darby Krislov to discuss the grant for adult probation. Darby. Good morning, commissioners. I'm usually here asking for money, so it's good to reciprocate this morning. <laughs> uh, th these funds are, are due to the county as a result of the department's compliance to uh, statewide standards. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Darby. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I will call on Kim Winton to discuss the contracts for aging and community services. Good morning. Uh, the first uh, for Dr. Royer is for psychology services uh, to determine the mental health capacity for protective services clients uh, before going to court for guardianship. Uh, the Nancy Nemoyer addendum. Uh, Nancy is terminating her contract uh, as of December 31st, 2021. Nancy was our Ombudsman Program Supervisor Consultant. Uh, we now have a supervisor in place, so Nancy feels that her supervision is no longer needed. Commissioners, any questions for Kim? Thank you, Kim. Thank you. I will now call on Jamie Ryber to discuss the contracts for children and youth. Jamie? Good morning, commissioners. Uh, the first one that we have is for Indiana University. This is just an agreement between the school and our agency in order to allow interns to come um, and do their internship with our office. There is no monetary cost to that. Uh, the second one is an addendum to our uh, United Methodist Home for Children Board of Child Care Program. Uh, this facility uh, on October 1st became uh, a specialized setting placement through the Family First requirements, um, and their rates are increasing significant, significantly. Um, however, they are going to be providing very specialized care at this point now, um, especially for those youth that are um, at risk of sex trafficking. Um, so their rates are increasing from $231.66 to $444.89 a day. Um, and this most likely will not be a program that we use often. Uh, however, it is available now if we need it. Commissioner, do you have any questions for Jamie? No? Okay, thank, thank you, you, Jamie. Thank you. Next, I will call on Ryan Simon to discuss the contracts for drug and alcohol. Ryan? Good morning, commissioners. Uh, the Mazzetti and Sullivan addendum is to add partial services to our contract with them. Uh, DDAP requires that we have two partial providers. And um, during 2021, we had one of our previous two um, closed. So we're adding Mazzetti and Sullivan so that we're back in compliance with DDAP. The second one with Qualtrics, um, that is an agreement that's related to the capital project request that you approved, approved on December 13th. Um, this is just to authorize Qualtrics to um, start up providing the uh, services for us. Any questions? Thank you, Ron. 
I will now call on Brad Cabrera to discuss the contract for facilities management. Brent. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this request is for a three-year contract with Penn Power Services LLC for the semi-annual preventive maintenance to be performed on our generators. Uh, this contract will also include yearly load bank testing, uh, as well as yearly inspection and cleaning of the transfer switches. Uh, the three-year cost is $26,724, uh, which is an increase of $4,524 from the past contract. Uh, the load bank testing and the transfer switches are all additional services uh, that were not included in the past contract. Uh, we did receive five proposals for this service with Penn Power having the best pricing, um, and this is a CoStar's quote as well. Um, this contract includes the generators at the main courthouse, prison, nursing home, and public safety. Um, each building is priced separately, and per the county terms and conditions, uh, we will have the ability to terminate uh, any of the buildings from the contract uh, without consequence. Um, also, I would want to mention that we did not forget about including the dates on the uh, contract grant term line there on the document in front of you. Um, this paperwork was already through the channels prior to uh, us realizing that you wanted to see that filled out differently. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Brent. Thank you. Next. Next, I will call on Kirk Stoner to discuss the contracts for liquid fuels and finance, as well as the contract for planning. And then also agenda item number four, please. Kirk. Sure. Uh, good morning, commissioners. First agenda item is a engineering agreement with HRG to do a debris removal contract for us. <clears throat> we do debris re removal contracts on a regular basis. After Hurricane Ida came through this year, we do have a number of, of bridges with debris in that we need to address uh, contract amount is, is $10,200 and we have that allocated in our bridge capital improvement program. Any questions on that one? Okay, second one then is uh, a, a MOU with Franklin County. This is uh, similar to what we have with York County, a cost sharing agreement uh, to uh, address a, a shared bridge there, Stonewall uh, Road Bridge. So. Uh, this was one we just realized we didn't have an agreement in place uh, with them, and we wanted to make sure we had had one in there to, to mirror what we we're doing with, with York County. The agreement is essentially the same as what we have for York County. We're sharing costs. That's on that. Yeah. Um, then, Kurt, would you continue on with the um, contract for planning, please? Uh, sure. So, commissioners, this is a, an agreement with Wilson Consulting Group to serve uh, contract or construction administration and inspection services for the Greece and Road project for the Cumberland Valley Rail Trail project. As you may recall, the county agreed to be the applicant for some funds through PennDOT that the Cumberland Valley Rails Trails Conservancy was not eligible to do. Uh, in serving in that role, we've we've agreed to administer a grant to extend the trail about two miles uh, along Greece and Road in West Pennsboro Township. We need to select a, a construction inspection and administration firm to do that. Back in July, we put out a request for proposals for that work through PennDOT's ECMS system. Wilson Consulting Group was the uh, low bidder for that at, at a cost of uh, $78,158. Uh, we've recommended approval of that as well as, as PennDOT. Again, we're doing this on behalf of the Cumberland Valley Rails and Trails Conservancy. So we're working in a, a program administration role here. This isn't an active project that the county is, is paying for, just serving in that project management role. Questions for Kirk? Uh, uh, Kirk, can you continue on then with agenda item number four? Uh, sure. So agenda item number four is our local match for capital area transit for calendar year 2022. I believe everyone received the memo that was submitted to the board in August of uh, 2021 outlining our financial commitment, so our local share, uh, amount of $374,113. Uh, that is a, a 5% increase, as you probably recall, each year our local share goes up 5% until we meet the state mandated 15% local match for our, our local operating share. It follows the guidelines of the CAT funding agreement that is based upon root miles of service in each county. So as we're all aware, in, in November, we did merge CAT with Rabbit Transit. So now we have the Susquehanna Regional Transportation Authority that is really overseeing all of our, our transit services. Our routes haven't changed yet. So we're still working under the uh, auspices of that this funding agreement. 
Uh, in the future, uh, there could be changes. You know, that's one of the benefits of regional uh, transit. Uh, right now, our routes haven't changed, so the agreement would, would essentially keep the, the same service in place that we've had with some of the modifications we've seen. Uh, you do see the Raider Regional Transit on there. We are providing a local share for that. I know there was some discussion of whether we should continue that. Uh, I, I know I've mentioned it at some of our SRTA board meetings of, of why is this one service called out and we're providing local match for that when there may be other communities that have similar needs that we should evaluate of how that might be rolled into normal service and not be called out as a standalone. So I think that's, that's something for uh, potential future consideration as well. Kirk, on that, um, I do know that the university has that under review. Are we are we at all privy to what their review looks like? Uh, Gary, I have not had any interaction with with the university on that. And, you know, we'd have to check with Rich Farr to see if if they're they're discussing it with him or it's a, just an internal discussion of their ability to fund it into the future. Questions, commissioners. Thank you, Kirk. Thank you. I will now call on Sue Carbo to discuss the contracts for MHIDD. Sue? Yes, good morning. Uh, we have four, four contracts here. The first three are IDD contracts. The first contract being Riverside Associates. It's an amendment. It's an increase of $7,000 for this current fiscal year for um, their services of doing psychological evaluations. The second contract is a head in incorporated. It is also an amendment. It's an increase of $2,983 for services around supported employment. The third contract is bold incorporated. It's also an amendment. It's an increase of $34,092 for their respite services. And the last contract is an MH contract, and it is York County Transportation Authority doing business as Rabbit Transit. It is an amendment. It's an increase of $34,506 for transportation services. Is there any questions? Yes, Commissioners. No. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Next, I will call on Travis Shank to discuss the contract for the prison and CNRC. Travis. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. This is the prisons and nursing homes annual contract with the Carlisle Area Religious Council for chaplain services at both facilities. The contract for the prison is for a full year, while the contract with the, the nursing home is a month to month up to six months contract. The amount of the contract total is 113,000 $93.96, which is a decrease of $33,396.04 from last year's contract. Any questions? Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Tammy. I will now call on Claudia Gardner to discuss the contract for public safety as well as agenda item number six. Claudia. Good morning, everyone. The first item we have is the contract with CenturyLink, also known as Lumens. Um, this is for our Vesta phone system maintenance. The Vesta system is the 911 phone system. Um, the price is $110,147.81. That is for one calendar year, I'm sorry, one year starting January 15th of this year, running through January 14th of next year. The previous contract was for $27,430, and you might be asking why was there an $82,000 increase? Here's why. When we bought the system five years ago, um, there are two parts that make up this uh, VESTA system, the CenturyLink, aka Lumens portion, and the Motorola portion. Those two parts um, work together to um, create the VESTA system, and when we bought it, the Motorola portion for the five years, the maintenance for that was included in the purchase price. The CenturyLink maintenance portion is what we paid annually since then at 27,000 per year. So the five-year agreement is now expiring and we need to renew it for one more year because as you know, we'll be soon looking at replacing that phone system. Um, and for that one year, we need to include the Motorola piece as well. 
So it is an increase of $82,717, but that is why. We've already paid the Motorola, Motorola portion the last five years with the initial purchase. Any questions on that one? No. Yeah, Claudia, would you please continue on with the agenda item number six? Sure, absolutely. So when a first responder dies, it affects more than that individual's family, and it has a tremendous impact on the department, all of our county emergency services, the region, and the community. Emotions are at their highest, and there are a lot of critical decisions to be made, and the community still needs the response services for daily emergencies. In 2019, as you recall, we came to you with a vision to bring a national training program to Cumberland County, the first in our region, and create a team of emergency services personnel who would form an honor guard. The honor guard team would respond to the affected agency with the first and foremost goal of honoring the fallen, supporting the department and the family. We took that same presentation to um, the chiefs of each of the emergency services in the county. Both you, the Board of Commissioners, and the Chiefs all showed full 100% support of the vision being implemented. In 2020 and 2021, we hosted two week-long classes and brought the National Honor Guard Academy to Cumberland County. There are now 26 emergency services personnel from the county that are trained and able to respond and support an affected agency at one of the most difficult times. In years past, Departments had to rely on previous experience or media coverage to learn how to properly honor the fallen. There are so many intricacies that you may or may not have picked up on that are proper for certain levels of service. However, now we have the professional training to assist the affected department in bestowing the respectful and appropriate level of ceremony, honoring their service and or sacrifice. Unfortunately, on November 16, 2021, East Pennsboro Emergency and Medical Services experienced the line of duty death of one of their own, EMT Jonathan Myers. Chief of Operations Philip Beck recalled hearing the presentation at one of the EMS Council meetings and remembering the goals and objectives of the Honor Guard, which prompted him to call our office for help. I'm very glad that he did because no agency should ever have to face this alone. Our team held nightly meetings via Zoom to ensure that every piece of the logistics and planning was reviewed, accurate, and approved by the department and the family. Having the resources, the training, and the knowledge, we were able to respectfully and properly honor EMT Myers and support East Parensboro EMS. Chief Beck was humbled to have the team devote so much time to him, the family, and the community in honoring EMT Myers' life, achievements, and contributions to the community. Knowing that we do not seek compensation, nor do we desire the accolades, Chief Beck knew that he wanted to pay it forward to others who may have to walk that same difficult path as him someday. And he would like to do that by donating a 16 foot resource trailer to the Honor Guard team. This will enable our team to have all of our equipment in one location in a ready status with the mobility to respond anywhere in the county or region as we are needed. At one time, we had to heavily rely on a partner agency in Virginia for the logistical and planning support, but now we are able to provide that for our own county. And having the trained personnel, the proper equipment, and now a resource trailer will enable us to respond more efficiently to the next emergency services agency. You should have a copy of the letter that Chief Beck sent to you um, that provides additional information. So on behalf of Chief Beck, East Pennsboro EMS, the local businesses that helped him and the Myers family, I humbly ask for your approval to receive a donation of an enclosed cargo trailer for the sole purpose of the Honor Guard team use. We will house that trailer here at Public Safety and it will be included in our annual maintenance under our budget. Claudia? I just have a comment, Claudia. Sure. I, uh, was was well, I was honored to be at the celebration of life for EMT Jonathan Myers. And um, you know, the Cumberland County Honor Guard did such an excellent job in uh, providing services and taking care of his family. And and I thought it was one of the um it was very moving, Claudia. And I really left there thinking that I knew who Jonathan Myers was. 
Um, and so I, I certainly thank you and the Honor Guard for your service in such times of, I would say, grief and, and sometimes despair. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. We're very appreciative of your support, all of your support um, from the beginning to see this vision become a reality. And we never really wanted to put any of the skills to use, but when we do have to, we want it to be done with the highest honor. And we were very thankful to um, be invited by East Friendsboro EMS to come in and train their personnel so that they, they could pay tribute to their fallen brother. I just want to add one thing. The uh, it's obviously a, a very generous donation by Chief Beck, so uh, I would I think it's pretty safe to say we're we're going to accept the donation, obviously, in our formal action Monday. But I would hope we would also find an appropriate means of uh, extending uh, public thanks to to him for the donation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our plan, um, Gary, is to uh, letter the trailer appropriately and respectfully and include um, East Pensboro EMS, um, Mr. Myers's family, and also the businesses who helped in the, the support, the financial support to make it happen. We'd like to include them somewhere on the lettering on the trailer. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. And uh, Kimmy, yes. our office will write a thank you note. For that Absolutely, correct? we certainly thank can. You. Yes, thank you. All right, next I will call on Tammy Shear to discuss the contracts for the recorder of deeds. Tammy? Hello. Um, I have two things in front of you today. The one is the VPS contract. Uh, we use VPS in our office for credit card payments. And I know there was uh, a process, uh, many of the offices were switching over to certified payments. Certified payments is actually almost a little too much of a program for our office. Uh, we have some very simple basic charges uh, that we need to do and VPS has been doing a great job for us and it has worked very well. So the, the contract for VPS in front of you is just a continuation of what we have been doing. Uh, we had in prior years been under a county uh, contract I think we have been part of that. And since the county no longer has that contract, I'm asking for my own contract to continue my uh, VPS credit card services. There is no charge to the county. It, there, it's a user charge. That's how things are paid for. Uh, but you have that contract in front of you. The other contract is through Reynolds Business Systems. And this was actually a project that I was starting to research uh, in early 2020, pre-COVID, to have my the old miscellaneous books from my office uh, from the handwriting days re-scanned and re-imaged because they were, they were done in-house. They were not saved at a high enough resolution for archival, a really good archival quality. And we, four years ago, did this for the deeds. Uh, the deeds went back to 1750. The miscellaneous documents start around 1820, so there are less to do. Uh, over COVID, really, for the last year and a half, a lot of the companies weren't doing things because it involved face-to-face -face contact, picking up books, scanning, doing that type of thing. And I had wanted a company that was a little more local, uh, something I felt a little more comfortable with. I don't want to ship books across the country to have them rescanned or things like that. So this company actually uh, is works very well. They've done some recorders work from in other counties, and they're in Allentown, so they're they're nice and close by. Uh, and also, one of my contacts is a former recorder, Dietz, so they're very familiar with what needs to be done and how things need to be done. So this is, you have the details in front of you, the estimate, and until we actually get scanning, we won't know the exact cost, but the estimate for services based on information I gave them is around $47,617.33. So in this money, I'm hoping to have encumbered from my record improvement account to have this paid for. So are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will now call on John Bittner to discuss the grant for vector control. 
Good morning and happy new year, everybody. Uh, let's see. So uh, 2022 Mosquito Disease Control Grant is with uh, PADEP, uh, 92,691.93 for January through December 31st of 22. Covers all the county costs associated with conducting the program and there's no match required. Uh, it's a small increase of over $3,500 uh, from uh, last year's grant, which is uh, we have a, a couple more bucks for uh, control products. Uh, all the other line items are pretty much the same. And then just uh, a quick review for uh, 2021 over 2020, we uh, collected about 3% more uh, collections of mosquitoes than we did for uh, the year prior. Uh, we had 69 sites come back positive. Uh, we treated uh, 100 sites for a larva control and nine sites or nine areas for adult control. That's it. Just for John. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, that concludes our contracts and grants. I will now turn the meeting back over to Stacey. Thank you, Tammy. So agenda item number four has been covered, so we'll move then to agenda item number five. And I'll call on Keith Brenneman to discuss the Cumberland County Tax Claim Bureau repository sale consent. Solicitor. Good morning, commissioners. This is one of many requests you receive over the years to give your consent to sell properties in the repository of unsold properties. Uh, your consent will allow the properties to be. <laughs> John, you're still on. <laughs> Hey, Ben, turn the mute on. Thank hey, you. thanks. Hey, goodbye, everybody. See you next time. <laughs> Your consent will allow the properties to be put on the tax rolls and be uh, subject to real estate tax counsel. Any questions? All right, thank you. Uh, agenda item number six has been covered, so we'll move then to agenda item number seven. And I'll call in Mary Kuna, who's joining us via Zoom, to discuss the recommendations for appointments and reappointments to the Cumberland County Blighted Property Reinvestment Board. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. So the uh, authorities manage and administer the Cumberland County Blighted Property Reinvestment Board um, on behalf of the county. The board consists of seven members um, within our bylaws. So those members, uh, one is a member of the Board of Commissioners, one seat is reserved for the chair of the Redevelopment Authority, one seat is recommended and appointed by the Cumberland County Planning Commission, and then there are four at-large seats, um, two that have two-year terms, two that have three-year terms. So what we are recommending, uh, we'd like to put, uh, there are right now three, three seats open, two at large and one commissioner seat. So Diane Voda is uh, basically a resident of Cumberland County, but she also works for a property management and development company. And she has been doing responsible for their contracting, lease administration, uh, development and marketing. And she has been on the board, this would be her third term. We asked her if she would like to continue. She's done a wonderful job and brings a lot of insight and experience. So she would be willing to serve again and, and would be honored. So we would recommend her for a two-year term. So this would be a, a renewal. And then we also would like to put Erin Trone, who is a Cumberland County resident and works as well in uh, community development for a local municipality on the uh, board. She essentially would be taking a three-year term. This would be her first term ever on the Blighted Property Reinvestment Board. Uh, she works as an assistant manager for a municipality, but she also has a great deal of experience with code enforcement, um, blight itself, and within community and economic development. And then for uh, a recommendation, uh, Commissioner Vince DiFilippo, uh, we would be uh, recommending him for the one-year term. Each commissioner position holds a one-year term on this board, so it would be one year uh, on the Blighted Property Reinvestment Board. Any questions for Mary? Thank you very much, so much, Mary. You, we'll, move on, we'll move on. 
We'll move on then to agenda item number eight. I'll call on Rich Barr to discuss the recommendation uh, for reappointment to the Capital Area Transit Board Authority. Good morning. If there we go, if I get my camera to turn on. Um, so good morning. Yes, we're looking for uh, uh, Scott Weiland to be reappointed to the CAP board for a five year period um, as allowed by the Municipal Authorities Act. Um, Scott has served um, for, I think, two terms and was instrumental in the creation of SRTA, which, by the way, went officially live on January 1st. Um, so I, I, I have a new employer, the Susquehanna Regional Transportation Authority. And so uh, yeah, the CAT board, if I just quickly refresh your memory, uh, both CPTA and CAT has to continue uh, in, in existence to manage the collective bargaining agreement uh, employees and everyone else, all the other employees have moved to SRTA. So we still need a, a board of directors for CAT. And again, we're recommending that uh, Scott be reappointed. Any questions for Rich? Thank you. Thank you, Rich. It's nice to see you, even if it's just on Zoom. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Uh, we'll move on then to agenda item number nine, and I'll call on Commissioner Fauci to discuss the appointment recommendations for the Cumberland County Library System. So the Cumberland County Library System Board is recommending uh, the appointments of the following board members. The first being Maggie Pepe, representing Fredrickson Library. The second, Jim Hutchinson, representing Bosler Library. The third, Judy Hawthorne, representing New Cumberland Public Library. And Alan Warshaw, representing Simpson Library. These appointments are for three-year terms, effective January 1, 2022, and expiring December 31, 2024. These are all new folks. These are all new folks. Yes. Um, Richardson is on the board. Well, he's will, he will be representing Bosler Library. Um, and then we have Judy Solare as a board member representing Simpson Library. And that appointment is to fill an unexpired two year term effective January 2022 and expiring December 31 of 2023. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions? All right, so we'll move on then to agenda item number 10, and I'll call on Commissioner Eichelberger to discuss the reappointment recommendations for the Cumberland County Industrial Development Authority Board. Okay, uh, just briefly, we had moved to a system um, that keeps recommendations, Solicitor Brennan's recommendation a while back, where we had the um, essentially staggering terms, and uh, we're working our way through getting all of those onto the reappointment cycle and the, uh, the later cycles coming into play now. And we did receive recommendation from the IDA for two existing members, Diane Nepper and Nipper, who is also our tax collector. Mm -hmm. And- uh, She's not anymore. Oh, she's she did, not? Yeah, no. Uh, okay. On the, on, the on the redevelopment board for a while, the industrial development authority board mm -hmm. for a while. And- uh, Former public official as well understands uh, what's going on there, and Luke Mercy, of course, from the banking industry, uh, both have served previously and contributed significantly to the success of the Development Authority. So they are very happy to present their names for reading. Questions. Cool. Move on then to agenda item number eleven, which is Commissioner's liaison reports, and I'll start by calling on Commissioner Eichelberger. Okay, just briefly, uh, a lot of folks are uh, moving past the holidays and getting their feet under them for the new year, new and hopefully better new year. So we'll uh, I'll just touch on a couple of things here. I got an update from Justin uh, over recycling, who said that um, he just gave me a year end number for the electronics recycling for 2021. They uh, serve a total of 3,889 customers. The collection amount was 304,514 pounds of electronics. All that will go into recycling rather than into the waste stream. So another uh, very productive year for that, still embraced heartily by our citizens as a worthwhile service. And um, let's see, he mentions it just yesterday, Conewago Valley School District 
I'm not even sure where that is. Is that like Mr. Valley? They brought in 4,683 pounds, all of it television. So that's the biggest load ever from a single customer. They said they'd be back. But so hopefully they, they make sure they show up on the day that we're open, you know, because we not open every day. So hopefully they check on the website. So uh, the only other matter which I'll, I'll bring the staff attention out is we, uh, I can't recall, I didn't, uh, Justin sent me a note this morning about our, one of our appointees, uh, Lauren Denton. Um, did, did, I'm not sure we made that appointment, but that recommendation had come through. It, it is uh, planning to be discussed. Planning yes. to be discussed. Yes. Okay. All right. So he just wanted to check in on that. So um, I just saw that. So I thought I'd bring that up. And that's everything he has uh, for now. Uh, we heard from Sue Carbo a little earlier, of course, regarding the uh, contracts for uh, IDB. We have um, obviously some, some challenges still remaining there that are COVID related with case numbers spiking again. Uh, she said they have 33 individuals since uh, end of September who, uh, who have tested positive. And uh, these are these are clients, and uh, some of the day programs have been temporarily closed to avoid further transmission, and that that could um, escalate uh, could very well escalate. We all know this is a very highly contagious uh, situation with the new variant. Um, there are big crisis continues to be the staffing issues. The uh, she reported that providers are experiencing anywhere between a 25 percent and 64 percent staffing deficit. Obviously, that affects the ability to provide essential services, which we've already been struggling with for a variety of reasons. So uh, they're getting applicants, but folks just are not showing up once the uh, once they're expected. So obviously, that creates even greater dislocation when you're expecting employees to show up, and they don't. So uh, they are in the process of receiving uh, significant Commonwealth dollars of Rescue Act money, which is uh, they are applying to. The personnel costs through signing bonuses and uh, retention bonuses, advertising, and, and some other um, hazard pay and some other mechanisms as well. But we're going to be keeping a close eye on that situation. Um, let's see. The uh, I think that's all I have for her for now. And uh, also, just as a uh, touch base on it, I think we were all everybody should be up to speed at this point. I think on the uh, on KDIC, we've implemented phase one of the uh, staffing assessment study that's, uh, that was is being done by outside consultants. It involves some reassignments and some reorganization. So that's being implemented. Um, staff, staff meeting, uh, staff briefing yesterday, first staff meeting uh, today. And uh, they are going to, I know it seems counterintuitive, but they're actually reconvening on site. Uh, uh, work for, for the group to the extent that folks feel comfortable with it and obviously using a lot of mitigation practice as well. But uh, staff has said they felt that it really compromised their ability to uh, achieve because of uh, everybody working remotely. Uh, they're going to be smart about how they go, go forward with it, but uh, well, at least for now, they can safely do that. So that's going to begin today. So the office will not be dark anymore um, for a while. So let's see, the board, I think the board chair provided you uh, a timely update on, on progress on that yesterday. Um, and as there's some more developments there, uh, she's been very good about staying on top of that issue, which is pretty remarkable. Um, considering it's a heavy lift for, for volunteer board members, but uh, important changes and, and important progress being made there. So that's everything I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner. Well, good morning, everyone. So I, I really want to start out and, and remind everyone, and, and maybe this isn't a reminder, but and really maybe this is for office staff as, as well as my colleagues. You know, I'm the liaison to three different groups here where their meetings conflict with public meetings of the county on a regular basis. So one is planning commission. <laughs> planning commission commences at 7.30 a.m. Often, often I have to return here before 9 a.m. for a commissioner's workshop meeting. Now, the last planning meeting, that did not happen. So I, I got to stay for the entire meeting. But often at those meetings, the business is not even really started by the time that I have to leave. Um, 
the planning commission is very kind to me and that they will say, hey, you know, what time are you cutting out of here? Because we're going to let you go ahead and give your update first. But that happens a lot. Um, and I know that uh, Commissioners DiFilippo and Commissioner Eichelberger, you get your uh, the dashboard. I have emailed, I just emailed that to you directly from the printer. So I know that you have those things, but it is it is very hard to give it, you know, to, to come here and tell you about what happened at Planning Commission when it's still going on when I'm in the room for the meeting. Um, I'm on the Stop Violence Against Women Task Force. Happens regularly that there is public business going on at the exact same time that that meeting is going on. Um, and it also happens with the Western Council of Governments, where there is there's a public meeting here, a commissioner's meeting here, at the exact same time I'm supposed to be at the Western Council of Governments. So I know this year we've already advertised all these meetings, um, but but for next year I really would like to put a push on that that ends. It is it is impossible. I cannot splice myself right to be in two places at once. It's very it's very tough. So I will start with that. Um, so the Children and Youth Citizens Advisory Committee meets next week. The HATS Coordinating Committee, I would like to remind the board of this. So I became, I was not originally assigned to this board, Commissioner Eichelberger. Um, I believe that uh, Vince and I split your duties at CATS and at HATS uh, because you were very busy, which I certainly understand. Um, because of COVID, I have not met most of the people at HATS in person. There has not been one in-person meeting of HATS. So I, um, you know, it's hard to develop relationships with people when you're on Zoom and really the HATS meeting on Zoom, the cameras are turned off. Uh, so it's even hard, like it's hard to know what's a face. You know, you put a face with a name, it's very tough. Um, but at the HATS meeting, um, there were a lot of things that, that happened. And again, they meet once a quarter. So there was the fall bike ped program. Um, there were 52 counts across 21 locations. Uh, and the plan is now to do more comprehensive video counts. So uh, there's more comprehensive data within the Tri-County region um, for walking and biking uh, developments. The 2023 to 2026 tip development, they're in the middle of doing that. It will come up for adoption in January. Um, there is they think $4 billion in new federal funds uh, coming to Pennsylvania that will be spread out over five years. They are looking at major projects. Um, 581 resurfacing and concrete work is a top priority. I think that that's good for us. Um, so that new infrastructure bill, they're excited about it, but they'd like to see the final numbers. Um, the transportation alternative set aside program had selected two projects. One is in Hummelstown, one is in Shippensburg. Each of the presented projects was scored three times and those that were leftovers will now go to the state round. Um, the I-81 improvement strategy, there is a website um, and yesterday communications put a push out on this website for a public meeting on the I-81 improvement strategy. I know that I have mentioned this before, it is interactive on the ID1 Improvement Strategy website. You can go to that website and you can look at the proposed changes um, to ID1, including interchanges right here at Carlisle. It is critical uh, that the public know that they can go out there and comment on, they're not even proposed changes, they're ideas. Do you want a diamond interchange? Do you want something else? Which of these exits here in Carlisle would they be willing to close? This is a, a critical piece. Um, and this public meeting closes January 14th. So I find it very interesting that this was put out during the holiday season when, I mean, no one is paying attention to what is going on uh, with PennDOT, with the ID1 improvement strategy. So I am very appreciative that uh, communications has helped to push that out. And I know we're talking about maybe doing a press release on it. Uh, the Gettysburg Road Improvement Strategy, there was a public meeting in November, it passed. Um, in, in Lower Allen Township with full board approval. On January 18th, there will be a public meeting of the Market Street for, uh, regarding the Market Street Bridge. That meeting will be held in Wormleysburg. Um, Carlisle Pike will be resurfaced early next year. That sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Um, the Federal Highway website. <laughs> I know, can you, I know, just, I'm just thinking about it. It's gonna be great. Um, needed, but great. The Federal Highway website 
has this view, there's a beautiful place on there to talk about all this new, it talks about all this new infrastructure money. You can go out there and learn about what is going on. Um, and finally with hats, cat now wants to sell the cat bridge again. So they are actively looking for someone to buy the bridge. Um, in case you'd like to purchase the cat bridge and Kirk and Kirk Stenner and Toby Fowler and I have discussed that at length. You bought it once already. So at the planning board, um, the first thing that's important to know is that James Ross, who has been such a wonderful chair of that board, his term expired. The new chair is Heather Schweitzer and the vice chair is Tim Johnson. And both of those members are from Lower Allen Township. Um, you know, this is a nine member board and they are volunteers. They do incredibly thoughtful work. And I am, it is always a pleasure to go to that meeting and listen with, listen to them and talk with them. Um, I appreciate every ounce of work that they put in. So at the last meeting, which was an incredibly lengthy meeting, um, the first thing that was on the agenda was the South Middleton Township New Airport District while well, it was removed uh, before the meeting. So that was not discussed. The Silver Spring Township Comprehensive Plan update passed. Uh, the board recommended that it, that it move forward. The Silver Spring Township new subdivision and land development ordinance passed. Um, the board recommended that that move forward. And then the Silver Spring Township new zoning, new zoning ordinance that had been tabled from February, uh, it passed, but it passed with a recommendation of the board um, that the Approval of the zoning ordinance with consideration of the comments in the review report with this exception of the tax parcel located at 1230 Willow Mill Road. That parcel is proposed for the was proposed for the interchange zoning district. Teresa, I got all this written down. I will hand it to you. You can attach it to the minutes. Okay. Okay. You know, yeah, it's it's impossible, I think, to keep up with at this point in time. Um so the Cumberland County Planning Commission recommended that the township reconsider the zoning on just that property in consultation with residents and property owners in the area. There's a tremendous amount of, of public interest in that. Um, and so I was, I was very pleased with how civil that meeting was. The members of the public were very civil. The members of the planning board were very civil. Our employees were very civil. So there was a lot of very good discussion and they came to this wonderful, uh, I would say it was a win-win for, for a lot of people, for almost everyone. So that was, that was a very, very good piece. Um, the West Pennsboro Agriculture Security Area was recommended to move forward. The North Newton Agriculture Security Area was recommended to move forward. And, Oh my goodness. Both commissioners have the upcoming subdivision and land development plans. And I think I think that was pretty much it for the planning committee meeting. But again, I have a packet this big. So you are more than welcome to always look at it, but it is gigantic. Um, I also went to the, and back in December, I went to the Cumberland York Area Local Defense Group. And boy, was that an interesting meeting. I was very happy to get an invitation to it. Um, but they did talk about how, um, how important having uh, military installations in Pennsylvania and in Cumberland County is. And I have to agree, they are certainly economic drivers. Um, and there's this fear that they will disappear because of, you know, a thousand teeny tiny bracks. So that's something that that group is really keeping an eye on and working uh, so that that does not happen. Um, Commissioner DeFilippo, I hope I'm not stepping on your toes when I announce this, when I talk about this. The uh, point in time count of homeless people will take place on January 26th of 2022. That will commence at 6 p.m. If you would like to volunteer with that, I have volunteered for that. You reach, I can't get you this, Teresa. You reach out to Maureen Mar Nations at the uh, Housing and Redevelopment Authority, and you can also be on the list to count. Um, so she said, you know, be there at six. We're going to give you some iPads. You'll go out as a group, plan to spend the entire evening doing that. This count is so important because this is one of the ways that we get federal dollars to help with housing and homelessness in Cumberland County. So that is a very important piece. 
Um, and yesterday I received a phone call from the Navy barracks. I discussed this with Solicitor Brenneman. Um, the barracks, they're going to do another water test in Cumberland County as a follow-up to the water test that they did two years ago. And they are testing for firefighting foam chemicals in the water supply. They will test in Lower Allen Township, Upper Allen Township, and pieces of Silver Spring. They are reaching out to those municipalities. Uh, they will, they're not testing in Hampton, but they will, they will be reaching out to Hampton Township to make sure that they're aware of what's going on. So that is a very critical piece of uh, safe water in, in Cumberland County. And I am reaching out to the LEPC today, that meeting is at one, and we will talk about, I will make sure that they know about that. Um, and I would remind you to use the library because it's such a fantastic resource. And again, you can learn calculus online with, with library resources. I think I'm finished. Okay, thank okay. you, Commissioner thank Bocci. You. I, I would just note that we will advertise meetings at whatever time the board decides those meetings should yeah, occur. So I, we can certainly discuss that. I um, would certainly appreciate that because it is very difficult to do two things at the same time. And I had mentioned yesterday to Tammy, um, and so that everyone knows this, my calendar uh, for this, for particularly for January and early February, filled up before our public meetings were put on it. So I will be doing a lot of very interesting juggling. Um, and there will be, I will, I will let you know, but there will be a couple of meetings that I will have to handle over the phone or via Zoom just for the purpose of getting to and from places. So. That was that was a, a topic that Tammy and I have previously yeah. discussed. And you know, I know it's important that you know um, in advance that I will have to do that either over the phone or via Zoom because we have to have a quorum in this room, right, for many of these public meetings. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner DeFilippo. Yes, thank you. The Conservation District met on December the 14th and some of the highlights is that periodically our nutrient management plan is evaluated by state conservation division and uh, a recent evaluation indicated that our conservation district is doing a good job at administering the program and that confirmation is in writing the letter dated october 19th of this of the past year uh, we had a very large nutrient management plan approved for mr todd Rabert in Monroe Township. Todd has 555 acres that he will be starting a small beef cattle operation and a uh, large broiler operation, which will house approximately 139,000 birds. There will be a lot of chickens there. Uh, and that was approved. The Conservation Excellence Grant Application Program uh, $250,000 was recently awarded to the Neelys who have a farm out of Elite. It, it is in West Pennsboro Township. And uh, this grant program, uh, Cumberland County was allotted $1.1 million. It has already been allocated. So that is good news. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll be getting more funds in 2022. Uh, Chesapeake Bay program update. Our county is now eligible for an additional 30 thousand uh, dollars to be used for BMP verification. So these funds will allow us to hire two interns who will assist in the BMP known as best management practices verification. And that uh, was also approved. Housing and redevelopment authority met on December the 16th. The County Emergency Rental Assistance Program has dispersed almost $3 million so far. Uh, the State Emergency Rental Assistance Program has dispersed $1.4 million. And the second round excuse me, started in early October. Uh, the grant total was $5.9 million, and $2.4 million of that has been dispersed. Uh, Mary Kuna, she always does, provided her executive director's report. Uh, some of the highlights is she attended a, a Perry County Chambers breakfast and shared information on our programs here. She also attended the 
monthly meeting between the county planning and CADIC, uh, very other, various other things that she has been doing. She's been very active for us. Uh, there have been two RFPs uh, sent out. One is for an advertising consultant to assist with the preparation of the county's home ARP allocation plan and for a new website design, which is uh, sorely needed. Uh, there's also there was a ribbon cutting ceremony at 157, 159 East South Street. Uh, this was a homeowner project and uh, finally came to conclusion. And let's see on, uh, this is not necessarily a liaison report, but I did, and I think I sent my colleagues, I met with some representatives of PennDOT on December 22nd to discuss uh, taking a second look on a section of Route 81 between exits 52 and 57, and in particular mile markers 53 to 55, which was a uh, site of a tragic accident this past summer where two young children lost their lives. Long story short, PennDOT uh, advised, they pledged to me that they would look into this again to see if uh, median barriers would uh, could be approved. As always, and understandably so, they are uh, faced with budgetary issues, priority issues, and I understood, but I also made the point that I think uh, two deaths is worth researching this area again. And they did pledge to me that they would do that. Uh, uh, Chris Derda, that was his, actually his last day as our executive representative. He was replaced by Mr. Chris Cuffrow, who I met. Uh, Steve Deck was also at that meeting. Uh, so it's up to my colleagues. I can continue to burden their all this issue, or uh, since hats will likely be involved as well, uh, Gene, please feel free. I also want to make uh, you aware that Silver Spring Township is getting involved with this. Uh, their township manager has a meeting with PennDOT actually this Friday on this matter and some other township matters regarding PennDOT. Uh, this is not a liaison matter e either, but I just want to take a minute to thank the East Pennsboro Township Commissioners who recently passed a resolution unanimously regarding their uh, concerns about the draft redistricting of the state house seats. And I just want to commend them. And also there's going to be another public hearing regarding uh, people who have comments on these maps. And it will be held at the Upper Allen Township building on Monday, the 11th at 4 p.m. And I think that is all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. I would like to report that there was an executive session held on January 5th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. regarding personnel. Is there any other business to come before the board today? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, no, no. Commissioner DiFilippo, I just wanted to uh, comment on your report. Mm -hmm. I think it would be good if we uh, combined powers on <clears throat> the I-81 issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, just one thing, Stacey, for yes. uh, We were emailing yesterday about putting together a uh, letter resolution regarding our disagreement with the potential pulling of the I-83 bridge, the South Street Bridge, and uh, Samantha and Keith, I know you connected, and I had simply asked if we could have something possibly to take action on at our Monday meeting. That's it. We'll certainly you know, follow the direction of the board to have okay, anything, that. yeah, anything ready for the meeting. So is there any other, other business to come before the board today? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.